Hello everybody, my name is Jacob and welcome back to another YouTube video. If you're new to anything with a camera or taking pictures in general, there are a couple of terms that a lot of people use and it's like an industry standard and one of them is aperture and I've spoken with a lot of people and I've seen some stuff on TikTok and Instagram reels of in the comment section asking what is aperture having a hard time understanding what it is and so then I even did some research I went on YouTube and I searched you know oh well what's aperture and I didn't get a lot of great videos so we're here to fix that and I'm gonna make this as simple and as easy to follow as possible I also don't want this video to be super long because understanding aperture does not have to be that difficult so we're gonna simplify it I'm gonna make it easy and hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a fantastic understanding of what aperture is which will in turn improve your pictures and videos so let's do it so in order to properly understand what aperture is there's a mode that I set on my camera that I usually just sit on if you're new to taking pictures or you're a seasoned veteran but you just feel uncomfortable getting out of the automatic mode I definitely recommend switching to aperture priority it should be the a the a label on your dial switch it over to that and you're gonna notice a significant improvement in your pictures, especially after this video. So with that being said, the number one thing to understand with aperture is that it just controls light. All that means is it tells the camera how much light to let in. So I use something very simple in order to understand what it is. Imagine an hourglass. Now we've all seen an hourglass. They measure time uh, by using how much sand is in there and how constricting the center point is for the sand to flow from the top to the bottom. The wider that gap is, the faster the sand's gonna fall into that hourglass. And the faster that sand falls into the hourglass, the shorter the time. Aperture can be, think, can be thought of very similarly to that of the hourglass, right? So that little constriction in that middle point for the hourglass, think of that as our aperture. The smaller the aperture is, the less light can get into our camera. The wider that nozzle, the more light that can come into the lens. With that being said, you still might be a little confused. I was too, I read a couple of articles that use the hourglass, but once I say this next part, I really think everything's gonna click. So let's take a look first at these two photos that I took. The first one is with a low aperture. This is known as an F stop, that is what the industry describes aperture as and without getting too complicated just remember it at denoted as an f and all that f means is it just tells you how constricted that part is in your hourglass the picture right here that i'm showing that has a blurred background because it's got that low f number the low aperture it actually centers and focuses on the subject much more efficiently than with a high f-stop or high aperture. Essentially, when I change my apertures, it has to do with what I'm trying to focus on. So if I am taking a portrait of a, so I do a lot of product photography, let me just back up, and I want that item, the product, to be very vivid. I want the background to be blurred out a little bit, and I want it to look sharp. So what I do is I will decrease my aperture so that the background gets blurry. As you lower your aperture, your background becomes more blurry because it's centering more on the item that's in front of the camera, also known as your subject. If the aperture is higher, all that means is that it's letting more light in and so it's better for like a landscape picture. Not necessarily for portrait photography or for product photography or anything like that. That is really good for let's say street. Like you're out in the street um, and or out in the city and you're trying to take some nice landscape shots. You want a little bit of a higher aperture or F number because it's gonna let in more of that light. It's gonna let more of that light in so you're gonna get a, a much wider and more detailed background. Because you don't really have necessarily a subject in focus. All I have to say is 
If you practice and play around with it, you're gonna learn how to use your aperture and what's gonna suit different situations better than others. That's the number one thing for me. I made a video about a month ago about me getting my camera, the one that's actually being used to film this video right now. And so give it about 30 days and I've sh I shoot, I try to go out every Saturday and Sunday, just kind of shoot, go around town, explore a little bit and try different light settings. The biggest thing that helped me was going out into nature and shooting in different light settings. Because when you're out, like if you find a trail, while you're out there, you're gonna see different settings. You're gonna see shade. You're gonna see glimpses of light coming through the trees. You're gonna try to get close-ups of animals, maybe birds, snakes, lizards, flowers, anything like that. And when you play around with your aperture, you're going to be able to create different dimen dimensions, different depths. So just play around with it and practice. But generally speaking, a lower aperture or f-stop is going to be for a close subject. It'll blur the background out. A high aperture is going to be better for landscapes when you want a wide view of something. Those are the very general tips. I hope this simplified it for you. I'm not getting into too much detail on it because it doesn't need to be overly complicated. You can get very complicated and it will increase and improve your pictures. But for right now, if you're just starting off, this is all you need to know. Play around with it, learn some other things. If you want, you're more than welcome to click off the video, but if you enjoyed, I have some extra tips to share. It's just one, but if you did enjoy, I'd appreciate if you dropped a comment. Let me know if I missed anything or help somebody else out in the comments. Just say, hey, this is also something that it does. And while you're scrolling through your social medias, try to let somebody know in the comment section how they can improve their pictures. It's a community we're just trying to help out. So with that, my name is Jacob and thank you for watching. If you want to see these t this, this next tip, here we go. So we're only gonna do one tip because <laughs> I wanna make another video that's more in depth on it a little bit and kind of offer more suggestions, and more tips. But for this video, there's something called an exposure triangle. If you've never heard of it, I plan on making a more in depth video later on. But what you're gonna notice is as you start to change your aperture, other settings and other things in your camera are gonna change. Mostly being your exposure and the other thing being your shutter. And without getting, like I said, too much into detail because it's just a very surface level, level video, the shutter is just how much light it lets in before it shuts the, the, the lens off, right? And then generates that picture. Your exposure is just how bright and how dark it is. And you can also express this sort of in an ISO. And generally speaking, your ISO, the lower it is, the darker your image, the higher the ISO, the brighter the image, the more overexposed it is. What you're gonna notice is as you start playing around with your aperture, those two slash three are going to change. Make sure that you're focusing on what's changing with the ISO. It's better just to kind of keep that as an automatic. Most cameras have a pretty good automatic ISO feature or ISO. Play around with your aperture, see how the ISO changes, see what happens to your video or picture as you play around with these settings and try to take some mental notes with it. Like I said, the best thing to do is practice and give it time and I know that very soon you're gonna have to you're gonna have much better pictures and you're gonna not be as frustrated so this video helped once again please subscribe and like the video and follow for more and let me know also what kind of videos you want to see as a beginning photographer i'm in the same boat as you just started but i hope you learned something today have a good one peace